and welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijason. On this week's episode of the program, we'll continue our conversation towards achieving local government autonomy across the state. With special focus on Zamfara, local government workers will receive 6,500 as the minimum. Let the conversation continue in a moment. When you are united, you are strong. But the moment you allow your ranks to be divided, as the proverb goes, it says, if a wall does not crack, no lizard or any reptile can get into it. So my advice, let not the wall of the Nigerian Labor Congress and its affiliates, don't let there be any crack. So, this was the admonition by a veteran labor leader, Azan Sumono, to Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, towards ensuring inclusiveness of workers from all strata in the country. In his acceptance speech after his re-election, the president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Ayuba Waba, reassured Nigerian workers of quality representation that the minimum wage if passed into law must be implemented. And therefore, we must dust all our protest shoes. We must get ready to engage the system until the system recognizes the fact that workers are not slaves. Workers are partners in progress. And therefore, we work for us to be paid. We don't work for charity. We work for us to be paid. We need to take care of our families. Just as the politicians still to do what they are doing, we need to also tell them that a worker is worthy of his wages. At the just concluded 12th Delegate Conference of the Nigerian Labor Congress, workers here are optimistic that there's a renewed strength to fight casualization of workers, outsourcing of staff, and many other social issues Nigerian workers might be faced with. At a time when the average Nigerian worker can't wait to see the national minimum wage change from 18,000 Naira to 30,000 Naira as soon as possible, I recently got complaints by some local government workers who earn 6,500 Naira as monthly basic salary. Curious on how a worker survives with just 6,500 Naira monthly. I took the journey to Zamfara State in the northern part of Nigeria to see for myself. There I met with Suleiman Alazan, an administrative officer at Guzel Luku government. <laughs> Can you tell me how much you earn and what level you are serving the local government right now? That is what I'm telling you. I'm earning at least level U3 salary. After I'm almost level U10. Whenever there is uh, evidence of advancement, but there is no benefit on it. You will go to school, you will advance, you will get the promotion, but still you are paying uh, you know, cadre level. So how so much do you have? 10,000 per month. That's what I'm in my salary. Are you happy about this? I am not happy. How will I be happy? I'm not happy at all. Suleiman Halazan explains the scope of his work as a shadow officer for agricultural department. I'm in charge of the staff files. And all of this happening there, if they bring the files, I'm in charge. I will forward it to the director. So after the director minute, it will forward it to the chairman. So whatever is the responsibilities on administration for the uh, agri staff, they are the one in charge of it. The agri department is, well, is a relevant department in the local government because they are in charge of uh, giving fertilizer to the farmers, forestry, in charge of forestry, and these uh, tractors for farming. There is more uh, responsibilities on agriculture department in Gusau local government. So 
With 26 years' experience of being a local government worker, Suleiman tells me how he spends his money. You see, I used to, in, among that 10,000 naira, I paid my Nepal bill 1,200. I paid school fees for children, almost 18,000 naira go to Oden. And transport, I used to check at times, but roughly 4,000 mostly. And at least per year, I pay 60,000 naira for my rent. So this is how I used to break the money and manage it. Do is not sufficient. But I will manage it, and that's how I used to do mostly. With the information he gave me, he spends 48,000 naira monthly, while he earns 10,000 naira. He rides a motorcycle after working hours to meet up with his responsibility. Suleiman had to go to his office but did not have means of transporting himself. He told me days like this, he has to trek to his office which is about 15 minutes away from his house and on this day I took time to take a walk with him to Guzao local government where he works. After the day's walk, he took me to his friend, who helps him with a motorcycle, with which he can earn extra income. The salary is not up to 10,000 at least. That's why I decided to bought him a new machine. This machine we share it together with him. The only thing he, would, whatever he get, he, he use that money to go and feed his children and wife, then fuel the machine for me, just for me to go to office and come back. That's the only benefit I did from the machine, so for him to fuel the machine in the morning. And when I come back from office, he now collected it, go for commercial activity, for him to support his wife and children. That's only the essence of, because he's my friend. So I feed him the way he said his salary is not up to 10,000. That's why I feed him. How will he manage to feed his children with two, two children and one wife? The time of Jamliu, a revenue collector at Gazelle uh, local government, also says he earns 8,000 so naira as a level 6 officer. He wants the Zamfara state governor to follow the minimum wage standard. I call the government to increase my salary to 8,000 naira not need for me. You understand, but I call it. Uh, but I call it the government to increase my salary, and others, well, especially primary school and local government level, eight thousand naira not in it. I call the government to assist me and other workers to increase our daily salary, uh, month salary from eight thousand naira to eighteen thousand naira, like uh, state government workers. The Zamfara State President of the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees affirms that local government workers and primary school teachers because don't benefit from the minimum wage. In Zamfara State, the 18,000 minimum wage is implemented in the state workers, where in the local government and the primary teachers is not yet implemented in Zamfara to this moment I'm speaking to you. Only few state that the local governments are operating as a third tier of government. But majority of the states in the countries are no more functional. You go to local government, you meet a local government like a dry place. Because people are not going there. Nothing is going. Only the government is paying salary to the workers. When it pays salary, because the local government is not allowed them to function as a third tier of government. 
Suleiman and Jamliu, who carry out their duties diligently as local government employees, hope the Zamfara state government will comply with the national minimum wage as it is being paid in other states of the federation. On the profile interview segment this week, I will be speaking with the national president of the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees, Comrade Ibrahim Khalil. He will be shedding light on the outcomes of the 40th anniversary of the union. Take a listen. It's good to have you on the program. Nice to be here also. Thank you. A lot has happened um, since um, Norgay's 40th anniversary. Can you share with us what the outcome of the program was? Well, um, I am glad to be with you again on this program. And uh, yes, we celebrated our 40th anniversary as a union. And uh, like the added goes, a pull at 40 is a pull forever and I believe that our organization, our union has come up, come up age. We are a matured union now. We are full grown adult union now and uh, it is on the basis of this and the fact that 40 years of our experience, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly we decided to celebrate our 40 years so that we appreciate God for making it possible to survive all the hurdles from the military era down to the tyrant leadership of the so-called democracy we are passing through from 1999 to date. And um, glory be to God, we were able to bring together our members from nooks and cronies of this country, almost a representation from the 774 local governments as enshrined in the 1999 constitution, and even from the uh, uh, development centers created by various state assemblies in various states. Uh, we had a handful of representation from all the segments that constitute <coughs> the union in the country. You spent more than two decades um, working as a local government um, worker. Can you share with us the significant difference between local government then and local government now? Well, sincerely speaking, there are a lot of differences. There are a lot of differences, first and foremost, local government then was owned by the communities because the communities were given opportunity to participate. The communities were carried along. They were involved from the planning to execution and even coordination of how to execute projects within the local government. The communities were given the opportunity to harness and source for their income and they were given the opportunity to elect their representative of their choice without much inter, you know, uh, interference from any level of government. Uh, particularly during the military era, when the cries in the country were too much, I want to say without any means of words, that local government under military dictatorship then was more viable, was more stable, was delivering more than when we started this journey of democracy from 1999 to date. The local government seems to be under attack. Many state governments do not allow workers or citizens to choose or elect their leaders. Is there any plan in place by Norgay to fight this ugly trend? I want to believe that 
Nolge as a union in local government have done a lot in this regard and we have been doing a lot and will continue to do a lot until the victory is achieved. But the critical area that we need to reinforce our effort is how to awaken the conscience of Nigerian people. How we can work and enlighten Nigerians to realize that the poor party related problems we are passing through today, the security challenges we are passing through today, the gaps in primary education and even secondary education, the dilapidated approach to primary health care we have in the country, the absence, complete absence of social policies we have in our system is as a result of malfunctional local government system. There is no way anybody can hold any leadership responsible, particularly at state level or at national level, without having a democratic, truly democratically structures at local government level. Workers' welfare is one important issue to Norge that I'm sure of. Can you share with us how many state governments across the 36 states in the country do not pay the minimum wage to local government workers? Well, I want to clearly say that I know the worst of the state is Zampara State. Because as I'm talking to you, the minimum wage in Zampara State is still at 6,500 Naira. It's very, very unfortunate. And the governor of Zampara State, the current governor of Zampara State, Governor Aziz Yari, is parading himself as the chairman of the Governor's Forum, shamelessly talking of, on behalf of the 36 governors. If we are a serious country. What our workers in Zampara State are earning as their minimum wage against the law of the state is enough a reason for governors in the country to sack Governor Yari as their chairman and also to put him on his toes to do the needful. So apart from Zampara, which is the worst, as I said, we have pocket of problems in various states, which, is, which differ from one state to state. If you take example of uh, Kogi State, workers in local government are also enjoying the 18,000 are supposed to be enjoyed by every worker in the country as of today. But the greatest challenge in Kogi State is that our workers, since the inception of this leadership in the state from uh, 2015 under Governor Benlo, they are collecting percentage. In some months, they collect 20%, 25% of their salaries. You can see how members and workers in the state are suffering at the detriment of the benefit accrued to the gov governor himself for his political interest. We suffered a lot in Kaduna. And to me and to our union, Kaduna is, 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 is like Zampara. Because the governor of Zampara State, uh, Kaduna State, uh, Governor Erufai, decided that he had to lay down some workers and local government workers uh, was the second in terms of casualty because about seven to eight thousand workers in local government were led up by the governor RFI with no reason whatsoever so if you are comparing those that are getting percentage 
and those that were laid off. To me, Kogi is even better than Kaduna because no worker lo lost his job in, in Kogi. But Erfa is sacked indiscriminately. So we have pocket of issues like that. In Plateau, 18,000 was not properly implemented. It was part of 18,000 that was, is still given to local government workers. And I know in Borno State also, there are a number of local governments that are not enjoying 18,000 maybe because of so many challenges within the state. And um, that is how it goes. But um, uh, we are mobilizing our members under the auspices of Nigeria Labour Congress as affiliate of NLC. We took a strong decision and uh, we are happy with President Muhammad Buhari for amplifying our decision. In one of his speeches, he called on Nigerians to reject any governor that failed in his responsibility to meet up with payment of salaries. That was our position and our members are fully charged that no government of any state that have not been peaceful in the payment of salaries should be given the opportunity to come back again. Yes. The struggle towards achieving local government autonomy has been on for more than two years. Can you share with us, are there any plans in place to re-strategize on engaging government at all levels to key into this? Well, I want to believe that um, a lot need to be done in order to achieve the functional local government as I said earlier. And um, I equally believe that more enlightenment need to be done. People need to be carried along. Nigerians need to wake up because in democracy, the political elites are after their interest. The followers weapon, the only weapon they have as followers is when the people in leadership drain. You force them to be on track through protest, peaceful protest, through useful engagement. If you look at Nigerians, comparing our population, how much of our percent uh, of our population is really really you know taking advantage of this constitutional provision when you are not happy when you are aggrieved when you are angry to engage government in peaceful protest during the 40th anniversary of the local government workers our words were given out to state house of assemblies and state government, um, especially those ones that actually committed towards the struggle towards achieving local government autonomy. Um, what do you have to say about this development? Um, are there any other plans to actually encourage them to do the right thing? Yes. Uh, you know, as much as you are battle ready on any issue, as much as you are ready to engage government at various levels on the need to improve on good governance. You need also to look at those that are, are doing well and say, yes, you have done well and you need to be encouraged so that you continue to do well. And that will also serve as a pointer to those that continue to do the bad things, those things that deteriorate the governance in our country. And uh, that was what informed the decision of the leadership of Nolge. By recognizing the nine state assemblies and their governors who passed the local government autonomy bill and agreed to enhance and improve the local governance. We appreciated them on behalf of Nigerians. 
we recognize them as uh, partners in progress and we encourage our members and we mobilize our members and we are still mobilizing them against uh, this 2019 general election. Any interest of those assembly members that pass our autonomy bill must be respected, must be carried along, must be, we must give them cooperation. Those that need to come back, they should be given opportunity to come back. And very soon, you start seeing the leadership of Norway, in particularly the nine states that pass this autonomy bill. Even participating in the, in the, in the rallies by the government of those various states. Because our interest is to have a functional local government. And they said, yes, you can have the functional local government. So this is the time to pay them back. We are going to participate in their election. We are going to participate in their campaign. And those that were against us, we will participate uh, in supporting their opponent. Certainly we will do that. You can't expect us, any reasonable trade union in Nigeria today, to ask its members to vote or to give a second chance for Governor RFI. We can't do that. Because he's the enemy of workers. RFI today is a governor of Kaduna because of his interest. He's a politician. Politics is about interest. And our interest is to enhance on the welfare and well-being of workers. Not to come and disengage workers. I wonder when President Buhari made the statement that any governor that was not paying salaries should not be voted again. I don't know why President Bari forgot about RFI. Somebody that went further by disengaging workers, not even paying salaries. So his case is even worse than those that are not paying salaries. And I believe workers in Kaduna must, must be charged, fully charged. They must work against him. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember, live or create wealth.